My name is Nick Adams. I am an alumni of the Civic Orchestra of Chicago. I am a freelance bass player in the Chicago area, and I have had the pleasure of performing with many groups in Chicago, and I'm currently serving as the principal bass player of the Illinois Symphony Orchestra. And I perform regularly with many jazz groups in the area. I also enjoy teaching music and working as a freelance sound designer. I'm excited to have the opportunity to share some of the practice tips I've learned along the way with anyone that may be watching this. To start, I want to talk about what it means to set yourself up for successful practice sessions. There are many resources available which discuss at length how to keep your practice space organized and about journaling your practice sessions, but I want to focus on the subject of mental clarity around practicing. I highly recommend that everyone that is going to be committing hours to practicing should spend some time researching the process of learning and developing performance skills. A good place to start is a book by Anders Ericsson and Robert Pohl entitled Peak. In this book, the authors lay out what deliberate practice looks like. Understanding what happens in the brain when you're trying to develop your musical abilities is crucial to continue to measurable growth on your instrument. Learning how to practice is not as straightforward as many people think, and additionally, exploring what deliberate practice means for you as an individual is just as important as having a great teacher. Next, I want to discuss what it looks like to set up your physical space for success. This will look different for everyone, but for me, I like to keep everything as simple as possible. If I am practicing my bass, whether it's in my home studio or on the road, I always have these items easily accessible. Metronome and tuner, pencil, rosin, my instrument, and some way to record myself. I keep all of these items in a small bag that lives in my base case so that I would never run into a situation where I don't have them. I do whatever I can to minimize distractions as well. This means that my phone is on airplane mode, I have water or coffee if needed, I didn't leave anything in the oven, I'm not trying to binge watch Netflix, and if I'm on the road, it is important to find a place that is secluded. Now it's time to practice. The way I start my practice sessions is always changing, but I like to reserve the first 10 minutes or so to getting comfortable with my instrument with no expectations. This usually looks like some improvisation or just sitting with my bass silently and taking some deep breaths. I think it's always important to check in with yourself and your emotions before trying to practice. I don't like to start practicing until I feel like I'm focused enough to take on the challenges that lie ahead. This first part of my practice is unstructured, but serves many important purposes. Primarily, I am trying to warm up my brain before jumping into any tough repertoire. During this time, I am focusing on these elements, the way my body feels, the sound of the instrument, the sound of the room, and being aware of any mental chatter that may be happening. If I don't give myself this time to acclimate to focused, deliberate practice, I might not really achieve anything of significance during this practice session. The rest of my warm-up changes day to day based on what I'm working towards, whether it's an audition, a performance, composing, or learning new repertoire, rather than focusing on specific exercises that may end up running on autopilot, I try to focus on musical fundamentals. That means I am trying to work specifically on tone production, time and feel, intonation, and style. I'm always trying to think less like being a bass player and more like being a musician. I will typically spend most of my warm-up time doing long tones up and down the instrument in different variations. Here are some of the examples of long tone exercises I do. The first one, I'm trying to make a loud attack and sustain a quiet tone afterwards. Second is a re-articulation exercise. So I'm trying to get a bunch of articulations without stopping the bow. And the last one is kind of an all-encompassing all exercise. It's a slow motion string crossing exercise. I'm gonna be covering long tones, string crossing, and some technical aspects of using a bow on the bass. Throughout all of these, I am trying to be aware enough to notice if I am relaxed, my posture is good, and I'm producing a good tone. 
there is an infinite amount of exercises that you can do like this based on whatever repertoire you are currently working on. I don't have strict requirements on this part of my practice. Again, it's all about keeping it simple. If I can only focus on one exercise, but I feel like I made a ton of progress with it, then I'd consider that a successful warm-up. I used to force myself to play through an hour and a half of warm-ups daily, but I realized that at a certain point, I was running on autopilot, and I wasn't really accomplishing much. At this point, I hadn't spent the time learning to practice, and I wasn't listening to my body. Because of this, I wasn't really progressing at the rate that I should have been. Instead of being tuned into the process, I thought that if I did the time, I would just get better, and that's not really how progress works. But as with everything with music, it's all a learning process, and I'm always interested in auditing my practice routine to ensure that I'm moving towards my goals. Many of my colleagues have mentioned in their videos some really helpful tips about effective ways to break down difficult passages and turning them into bite-sized goal-oriented chunks. So I'm not going to reiterate what they said. I wanted to talk about the ways that I approach finding new perspectives when practicing. If I'm feeling particularly uninspired with a passage, I try to employ a method acting element into my practice. This may sound a bit strange at first, but bear with me. For instance, if I am practicing the Mahler 1 bass solo, and I'm just not feeling like I'm getting what I want, I may try to visualize that I am a character in a movie such as Lord of the Rings or another surrealist world. I put down the bow for a moment and try to visualize every aspect of the scene that I can imagine. Would this world be cold or hot? Would it be light or dark out? Would there be another person around? Trying to identify every detail about this different world. I would then pick up the bow and try to replicate the feeling through the instrument. A crucial point to note is that I'm not worried about the performance being perfect. I'm just trying to create a new color or voice for this piece. We could take this in another direction and try to visualize what it would sound like if this had been written in a different style or even in a different key. For instance, what if Jimi Hendrix was to try and play this in the key of A minor instead of D minor? What would that sound like? Maybe something like that. Of course, we would never play like this on the stage or in an audition, but the point is to push our comfort zone and develop familiarity with new musical ideas. For me, the more I learn about my instrument and music, the more I learn about myself, expression, and life. I feel like the parallels between the two should be highlighted as much as possible. The reason I bring this up is because I think we can all learn so much more about music just from being aware of our day-to-day -day lives. For instance, noticing how one moves their body during mundane activities throughout the day can give great insights into the technical side of playing an instrument. I noticed at one point that my left hand, I'm left-handed, would cramp a lot when I had to write anything longer than a short note. I spent some time just trying to notice what happened at the point that my hand started cramping and brought some attention to it. Merely noticing this alleviated the tension and allowed me to write longer without having cramps in my hand. This insight translated directly to some difficulty I was having with fast passage work on the bass. Learning to bring my attention to my left hand fixed the tension problem, just like turning on a light in a dark room makes it easier to see. Another example of this is something I noticed when I would sit at a computer. I noticed that I would hunch forward while trying to focus in on something, allowing myself to develop a bad habit of compromising my posture. A simple reminder to pay attention to my posture during this activity fixed the problem. And again, this process is easily duplicated on the bass. The limits of this are truly endless, but had I not had a vested interest in improving my bass playing, I may have never improved my day-to-day -day posture. Try noticing if there are things that you do every day that can be made easier with a little bit of awareness. The more mindful we can be with all aspects of our instrument, the easier it is to identify what needs to be worked on in future practice sessions. 
I hope these tips are helpful to you and I invite you to watch the excellent videos that my colleagues have put together. Remember to keep it simple and enjoy your practicing.